This lesson deals with supplemental problem 9.5. You can find this problem in the course ebook in the chapter 9 supplemental problem starting on page 6. This supplemental problem is going to look at trying to design a battery eliminator for a CD player. Now, many, many years ago, we listened to music recorded on a compact disc in a portable player. This particular one was one my son had, which was a model D131 made by Sony, and had two AA batteries in it. And the batteries seemed to be wearing out a lot as we were going on trips. So I was looking at designing a circuit I could plug into the cigarette lighter that I could recreate the voltages and currents I needed to run this thing under basically all the conditions of being in a car. I took it apart and measured the current being pulled in by the battery terminals with a power supply, like the ones we have in lab, and found that the minimum current was about a quarter of an amp. This was occurring when I was playing music, no matter what I set the volume to in the headphones. And that's because most of this current is running a motor. But a CD player would also speed up to look for another song. And when it did that, the current jumped up to about a half an amp. And drawing this much current, these batteries won't last very long. Now I also have, besides this varying condition, we also have the voltages in the car itself, depending on whether the car is on or off. A fully charged battery, when you're running the car, is about 14 volts. When you shut the car off, the battery voltage starts to drop. Usually it starts out about 13.6 or so, and then after several hours, it can actually drop to about 10 volts, is about the lowest it'll ever drop to. That's a range of voltages I could expect to see if I have the car running or have the car off. Now, I'd like to pick the components of my design so this works under all conditions. Now, I'm going to use a Zener that could replace the batteries. Fully charged AA battery is about 1.65 volts, so doubling that would be 3.3 volts. And I found a 1N5333 Zener, which was rated at V sub Z of 3.3 volts, but it was a 5 watt unit. Let's see whether this is going to be a large enough wattage for us. Now this Zener voltage was guaranteed if you could have at least 20 milliamps of current in the Zener diode itself. We have a lot of different conditions for this particular application. Let's see if we can write them all on the schematic. Let's take the schematic that we used in the class notes. And so what I've got is my Zener across my CD player, where the current in the CD player is somewhere between a quarter amp and half an amp and the battery could be somewhere between 10 volts and 14 volts. Could I pick the resistor R and select the wattage of it to make sure it doesn't melt, and then check the wattage of the Zener to make sure that I haven't put too much power into that. In picking the value of R, we gotta make sure that this circuit works under all conditions, where I've got a varying battery and have a varying load. Let's see if we can figure out the worst case condition. Well, I know the Zener diode needs a minimum of 20 milliamps to work. Now the current in this resistor, if you recall from chapter 9 on page 12, was that this current supplies the Zener and the load. The smallest current that's here has to be able to supply the worst condition, which would be minimally 20 here and 500 milliamps in the load. The current in here has to be at least 520 milliamps at all times, or more. When does that occur? Well, let's, let's figure out the current in the resistor. The rise in voltage is V battery, the drop is I sub R times R, plus the 3.3 volts. So we could solve for the current in the resistor as the battery voltage minus the 3.3 volts divided by R would be the current that's flowing in here. What's the smallest value of the voltage across here? Well, it's when this battery is at the smallest value. 10 volts minus 3.3 divided by 520 milliamps would be the value of R. That turns out to be 12.88 ohms. The calculations are shown on the next page. But we'll have 12.88 here. But in terms of power dissipated, what's the most current that could ever flow in here? Well, it's not when you're at 10 volts, but when you're at 14 volts, because the voltage here is fixed. But when I have 14 volts here and 3.3 volts here, current in this resistor, from the formula we just derived, is gonna be 14 volts minus the 3.3, divided now by 12.88 and that's 830.7 milliamps. That's on the next page, let's take a look at that. Power dissipated in the resistor is the voltage times the current, or I squared R or V squared over R. Since we know the current, we could just square that and multiply it by the resistance. And that gives me about 8.9 watts. Now that's really hot. You really couldn't hold on to that resistor. You'd burn your hand, but it will work. We need a big enough resistor. This would probably be about the size of one of your fingers in diameter. Now what about the wattage rating of the Zener diode? The current in the Zener diode is equal to the current in the resistor minus whatever flows into the load. 
So when this is at its largest value and this is at its smallest value, we'll have the largest current in the Zener diode. Just writing it here is so I sub Z maximum would be I sub R maximum minus the minimum load. So the most current we could get in the resistor when the voltage went up to 14 volts was 830.7 milliamps. That was a calculation back over here. And then the least amount of current in the CD player was a quarter amp. So that's 580.7 milliamps. Power dissipated in a Zener diode is not I squared R or V squared over R because there's no resistance. It's just simply the voltage times the current. So 3.3 volts Zener times the 580.7 milliamps would be 1.92 watts. That too is a lot of power to dissipate, but I picked a 5 watt zener, so it would be okay on that. And if I picked a 10 watt resistor, this would work okay too. But this is a lot of heat to give off in a circuit. If you put this into a box or a handle to plug into the cigarette lighter, you probably would burn your hand. So we're going to revisit this problem once we talk about transistors and see if we can eliminate some of this current that's flowing into the resistor that's feeding the zener diode. And this is the design of a battery eliminator for a Sony Discman CD player.